All right, we went through uh, differential motion. Let me just remind you is that we formulated the problem as looking at the rate of change over time. And what's nice about that technique is we start with a very simple assumption, brightness constancy, and then we derive how to estimate velocity. There's some bells and whistles on how to make it reliable, the median filter, the pyramid, the size of the filter, the conditioning of the matrix, lots of things you have to worry about. By the way, this is true in everything in computer vision. Often where the theory meets reality, there's lots of things you have to worry about when you really go into real world images. Um, but that was really only one way in which we can estimate motion. So when we started this, all of this, we said there's two ways to think about this. The differential, what is the rate of change? And the other was, in some ways, maybe a, a more simplistic or a more obvious, maybe is the right way to say, uh, approach, which is feature tracking. Um, I specify for you a point on an object, um, and I ask you to track it over time. So for example, on time one, um, there's the front of the bumper. Where is that? point in the next moment in time, the next moment in time, and the next moment in time. So how could we do that? Well, let's just think through what an algorithm might look like. So take a point on an object, and how do I represent that? Well, I, there's a couple of options at this point. We can compute the gradient. Oh, well, we can just look at the pixels. We can say, look, here's what the pixel representation is. We've got some black pixels over here, some white pixels over here, um, and then look for that little pattern in the next moment in time. We could compute the gradient and say, ah, I've got a, a big edge over here, look for that edge at the next moment of time. I could do a hog descriptor. I could say, here's the hog descriptor at time one, please look for that same hog descriptor, assuming the appearance doesn't change, at the next moment in time. So we, we have to make a decision here. What, how do we want to represent the underlying content? Right now we have sort of three representations, pixels, grayscale or color, uh, gradients and hogs, any of which will be perfectly fine for what we are trying to do. I'm going to stick in the pixel domain now just to make it, just to sort of get through the algorithm. Uh, but you can, you have a choice here at the beginning on how you want to represent your, your data. And don't be constrained by the fact that you've recorded pixel. You get a choice up front, as we've seen with the gradients and with the hogs, and we'll see some other representations later on. So now what would the algorithm look like? All right. I pick a moment in time on the first frame, yeah? And now what I'm gonna do is try to track that over time. So I have some appearance, we're gonna do pixel based. And so let's say we're looking over a little five by five patch. So I'm gonna look for that same pattern at the next moment in time. So let's start right here. Uh, I've got a little red dot on the front fender of the car. I put a little five by five patch and I yank out the intensities there or the gradients or the hog descriptors. And then I ask around me, assuming again that things moved relatively slowly, which is usually the case, around me, where do I see that same patch of intensity? So is it that patch? Nope, that looks different. Is it that one? No, that one looks different. And so on and so forth. So I can look over a little area and then eventually I'll get to a spot and be like, ah, that patch of intensity looks an awful lot like the previous moment in time. And nope, not that one, not that one, not that one. Now, obviously I don't know where to look, so I have to cast a wide net. But I don't really want to cast too wide of a net. I don't really need to go from the bottom left part of the image to the top right of the image. It's exceedingly unlikely that something's going to move that fast or that far. And so what I can do is assume a certain range of motions between two moments in time. Video is, after all, sampled at a rate of 1 24th of a second or 1 30th of a second. And so things are going to move relatively slowly. So I pick a little window I want to look around, and I search. I Just a search problem. That's what feature tracking is. Is I've got a representation of a patch. I want to find it in the next moment in time. And now when I do that, I now have, ah, the patch was here, the patch is here, the vector connecting those two positions in, in space is my motion. And then go to the next pixel, pick a little patch, look for it. Now, we sort of have the same problem we had with the, bright, with the differential motion estimation, which is what? If that patch is completely uniform color, let's say you're looking for a patch of my jacket, well, you're going to have a little bit of trouble there because there's nothing distinct. So edges, corners, where there is texture are your friend, and everything else 
you're sort of going to be blind to. Well, you are blind to that in the differential motion estimation as well. So nothing has really changed here. And that's just a fundamental limitation of doing this kind of local motion estimation is you've got to have a signal to latch onto. All right, let's see what that code is going to look like when we come back.